Hello, my name is John Townsend and I'm the Vice President of the Population Council and Director of the Reproductive Health Program, the leading developer of long-acting reversible contraception, commonly known as LARCs. Products developed by the Council include the Comfort-T Intrauterine Device, or IUD, the Levonorgestrel Intrauterine System, or IUS, two contraceptive implants, as well as a range of new vaginal rings for contraception, infection prevention, uh, and other indications. Currently, 170 million women worldwide are using a highly effective contraceptive developed by the Council or based on our technology. Research and development in contraception is a critical component of the strategy for addressing the future health needs of individuals and their families by 2030. Family planning, an individual's decision on the number and timing of their children, is now recognized by over 190 governments around the world as a basic human right, and access to effective contraception is the means for families and individuals to fulfill their reproductive intentions. With the adoption of the Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, by the UN in 2015, it's clear that contraception will contribute to their achievement globally, particularly to SDG 3, which is ensuring healthy lives and promoting well-being at all ages, and SDG 5, achieving gender equality and empowerment of all women and girls. It's also the cornerstone of the call for universal health coverage. We've made great progress in, in ensuring quality contraceptive services since the early 1960s and the introduction of the first oral contraceptive. We now have an array of products and services for delaying, spacing, and limiting pregnancies, a range of prices in diverse markets for these products, and systems for ensuring their quality delivery by governments, private sector providers, and pharmacy networks. Awareness of contraception is now nearly universal. In 2015, 64% of married women of reproductive age worldwide were using some form of contraception, and about 90% of use involved modern contraception. The emerging generation of young men and women are increasingly interested in using modern contraception as well as supporting their partner's use for their health and well-being. Nevertheless, there are challenges. Globally, about 40 to 50 percent of pregnancies, even in more developed countries, are unintended, and about one-fourth of these pregnancies end in abortion, regardless of its legal status or safety. Worldwide in 2015, 12 percent of married women had an unmet need for family planning. That is, they wanted to limit or delay childbearing, but were not using any method of contraception. This level is nearly double, 22%, in the least developed countries and among the youngest, most vulnerable populations. Concerns about side effects, lack of family support, personal preferences and choice, and the cost of the method or the need for a skilled provider are among the reasons women cite for lack of use when a pregnancy is not desired. If we can develop new products in other areas of our lives, whether cell phones or healthy foods, why is it still an issue that we need to improve on contraceptive options? Product development could make contraceptives easier to use, lower cost, more targeted in their delivery, or available through a broader array of health delivery systems without sacrificing the safety and efficacy as the standards in our field. Let me provide three examples of development in the near term. Contraceptive vaginal rings, and here's an example of one, um, provide the same protection as oral contraceptives, but provide a lower continuous dose of hormones to avoid pregnancy. As the woman can insert and remove the product themselves, it's under their control for delaying or spacing of pregnancies. Rings are also being investigated in combination with other infection prevention agents to reduce the risk of infection against HIV or other STIs. These are commonly referred to as MPTs or multi-purpose prevention technology. Research is also underway to improve injectable contraception, allowing for longer periods of effectiveness of each dose, six months or more, and slower release of active pharmaceutical ingredients for optimum birth spacing. The use of self-injection technology is now available to reduce the dependence on providers, lower the dosage, and improve supply chain distribution without compromising the quality of care. New contraceptive products for men in the form of implants and gels are also under development to allow men to share the responsibility, risks, and costs of contraception with their partners. Safer, easier, and less costly permanent contraceptive methods are being developed to ensure that women and men do not really have to rely on temporary short-term methods for up to 30 years once their desired family size has been reached. Using medical-grade polymers, fallopian tubes in women, or the vas in men can now be blocked safely and effectively. 
Potentially, some of these techniques can be provided safely even by lower level providers with appropriate training and supervision under task sharing schemes. So what are the expected benefits of new methods of contraception? Clearly, the most immediate beneficiary of contraception is the user uh, and their family. It's estimated that more than 30% of maternal deaths could be prevented by women who do not want to become pregnant simply using contraception. Additional benefits documented in multiple countries uh, suggest that each dollar invested in contraception leads to savings of five to eight dollars in averted health care costs during the first year alone. In the longer term, the Copenhagen Consensus Center estimated that achieving universal access to sexual and reproductive health services by 2030 and eliminating unmet need for contraception by 2040 will return $120 for every dollar invested. Changing the age structure of populations by ensuring access to all women and men who want to avoid an unintended pregnancy would lead to more working adults and fewer dependents. When combined with smart economic policies, such as providing women with greater opportunities in the workforce, this demographic dividend will contribute to increasing family income, foster economic development, and allow more resources both at the household and national level for investments that affect the quality of life of all families. So what do we need to make this a reality? First, we need partnerships with pharmaceutical industry, manufacturers, provider networks, governments, academia, and civil society to ensure that quality products and services needed by families around the world are available, affordable, and accessible. We need to invest in the science of development as well as to respect the rights of potential clients to ensure these products address users' needs and health system requirements. Above all, we need to foster accountability to ensure that the benefits of science are available to all communities and individuals around the world to create a more just and healthy future for us all. Thank you.